Okay, let's find the area and the shaded part underneath this curve found by the X and Y axis and the line right here, five, right? So we're gonna use this thing called the trapezoid rule and what we're gonna be doing is basically um, making trapezoids inside of the, underneath here to uh, find the area of each of the trapezoids and add it up and um, yeah, get an approximation. So our trapezoids are gonna look like this. We're gonna break this, this area here into five equal spots, right? So we've got one trapezoid there. There's gonna be another one right here and uh, like this right here, right? And then a, a third and a fourth and a fifth right there. So what we're gonna do <clears throat> so we're going to find the area of each of these trapezoids, add them up, that's going to give us an approximation of the area underneath the curve. Uh, a couple things real quick. If it's not arbitrary, how many, how many trapezoids we have right here? Um, here, it's pretty easy because it turns out to be integers, but you see how the, the distance is 5, right? It's 0 to 5. And so if you wanted to cut that up, into you know five spaces you divide by five and that's why each one of these is one but if we wanted to take that distance and cut it up into say ten places then every half we would have one and the more triangles the closer it is the, the, the more sorry the more trapezoids the closer the area of the trapezoids will be to the area under the curve so um, let's go ahead and take a look at this now the formula is this. Now where people can get into trouble is these bases. The deal with the bases of a trapezoid is the bases have to be parallel. And the height is perpendicular height to those two. So actually the height is here. Do you see? Each of these heights is one for each of them. So most of the time we see a trapezoid try kind of drawn with this orientation, but now we're seeing it drawn kind of like this except over here it's you know it's perpendicular exactly so what we have is we have a trapezoid that looks kind of like this right so this is the height and then those are the bases so we're going to find the area of each one of these we're going to add them up and that's going to give us the approximation of the integral from 0 to 5 4 of x plus 1 dx, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this first one right here, if we look at it, what we have is we have 1 half times 1 and then um, plus the basis. So this base right here is 1 plus 2. So that's 3. 1 half times 3 is 3. 3 over 2 is 1.5. All right, so let's do the next one right here. Here's what we've got. We've got half of 1 right? One half height, right? One half height, and then some of the bases. So this base is 2 plus 2.41. So this is one half of 4.41. Now I'm not going <clears> to <throat> trust my brain to do any calculation right now. So 4.41. Uh, so we're going to use a fancy calculator right here. So we're going to get... Uh, 4.41 divided by 2. And of course that doesn't give us, that gives us the 2.21. We're going to round to two, two, three significant figures. So one half of one, of course, right? And then 2.41 plus 2.73. The y coordinate is the height of every single one, you see? So we have is 2.41 plus 2.73. I'll do this on the side over here. You can just take my word for it. And then we get 2.57. 2.57. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this. Save a little time. So we have 2.73 plus 3. So 5.73. 5.73 divided by 2. So we got 2.7. Eight, it says 865, so that would be 2.87. And then the last one, so we're going to have um, 3 and 
3.24. So that's, right, 3.12. There we go. So those are all of our, right, those are all the trying, all of the trapezoids there. So now when we add up each of these trapezoids, <clears throat> what we're going to get is the whole thing. So let's see, you can get that inside the ring light there, right? So 3.12 plus... Twelve point two seven. Now this is an approximation, so you have to use that little squiggly thing right there. Now if you were to do this in a calculator, uh, the actual is 12.5, so it's a little low, which we'd expect because you see we're missing some there and a little bit underneath each one of these, but that's pretty good. Now I'll put a link in the uh, description because I've got a kind of a nice little lesson that walks you through this whole thing got a couple examples so it's got some bell work which actually gives you these points you sketch the graph answer some questions you're going to use some estimation and then it kind of organizes the work we did on that diagram in a table right here so you can kind of keep track of what you're doing so anyway I'll put a link to that in the description so you can download that, that if you like and I hope it's helpful for you guys this is a good way to start to get to understand how um, this integration works, the Riemann sums work, and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway, hope it was helpful. If it was, hey, give me a thumbs up. It really helps. Leave me a comment if you have a question. Leave me a comment if you learned something. I really appreciate it. All right, you guys have a good day.